Garrett, the concept of time seems so ordinary to us, and yet to physicists, it's something that is absolutely critical to all the theories and everything that's happening. And everybody has a theory about time, and people are bombarding me with these theories. I want to understand it. So, you claim that your new theory of everything, your E8 theory, can explain time. I'm skeptical, so tell me. Well, time actually arises in this E8 theory in a very natural way. It arises the same way that elementary particles in the standard model get their masses, right, through a process called symmetry breaking. Now, the way this works is, in E8 theory, you think of the universe as a four-dimensional fabric that has this E8 group moving over it, this E8 group being this 248-dimensional smooth geometry. And that's your theory of everything? That's the basic structure of this theory, yes. Okay, okay. And the, uh, remember, the, this is, consists, so this Lie group structure consists of 248 sets of circles, and each one of these different circles corresponds to a different kind of elementary particle. So one would correspond to the electron, another to a blue up quarks, you know, with a spin so all up the state. different zoo of particles. The whole zoo, each is, one. Each one has a geometric representation through these circles within your 248 circles in your very complicated legal. Right. Right. That's right. Okay. Good. Now, and whichever way the Lie group is twisting, as described by the connection over this fabric. That's what elementary particle is there at that point. Okay. Okay. And if it's twisting in some combination of ways, that means there's a number of elementary particles coming together at that point. Oh, so it's a complex function of, of all the particles coming together. That's it, right. It, sh it determines the, the shape of this complicated, all these circles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. All right. So, uh, so the way time emerges is actually quite interesting. What happens is, when you have this fabric with this shape twisting over it, you can calculate what's called the curvature of this combined geometric entity, right? And it basically corresponds to how this, uh, how things are changing, how this twist is changing over the, over the fabric. And that's, this is called the curvature of this geometry. Now, if it's not changing at all, right, then the curvature would be zero, okay? okay? However, you can have a consistent, constant twist in, of this Lie group over the space-time fabric. So if you have this continual twist in some direction, and you take the curvature of this geometry, it can still be a curvature of zero. But now, it's a curvature of zero corresponding to a non-zero connection, corresponding to a non-zero twist of this geometry over the fabric. And if you have it twisting in some specific direction, all at once over this whole fabric, then you have what's called symmetry breaking. Because what happened is because this whole geometry is twisting in one specific direction at a constant rate over all of space time, now you've broken the symmetry of this full E8 Lie group. And what remains is all the directions in which it's not twisting. And those become the forces of gravity and of the electromagnetic weak and strong force. Whereas the direction it's twisting in, that becomes the direction of time over oh. the fabric, and the constant value is the value of the Higgs field that interacts with all these particles to give them their masses. So they become all interrelated in this theory. So since this theory is a unified description of gravity and the elementary particles glued together by this, gra by this arrow of time and space and the Higgs field, it's really amazing through the symmetry breaking process how you get a sense of time and distance on your fabric and also the Higgs field that gives masses to the elementary particles. Okay, so, so you've now included all the things that count as far as what makes up reality. And I guess I can, I can follow you on the geometry of the Lie groups cr creating the physical particles. You can, I can make that. But time seems more difficult to conceptualize. How out of that structure, how that forward rolling structure generates time uh, yes. out of the geometry. I can see the geometry resulting in particles. Yes. But it's hard for me to see the geometry resulting in time. Well, um, let's deal with space first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're comfortable with space having three different directions. Yeah. Comfortable is a very aggressive <laughs> word. <laughs> I would say I can, I, I can barely follow by hanging on by my fingernails. Yes. Okay. Um, 
So this thing, so this is, if you think about the geometry of three-dimensional space, right? This corresponds to a Lie group, right? Of how you can rotate things. Okay. All right? So if you think of something that can point in three different directions, I'll, I'll, let me use a visual aid, if you don't mind. So, um, all right, so if you, if you start with some object here, right? You can take this and you can rotate this in three different planes, sure. in three-dimensional space. Sure. So you can rotate it in this plane, mm -hmm. That'd be round rotation. You can also rotate it in that plane, mm -hmm. and also in this one. Yep. All right. Those are three perpendicular rotations. Right. Now, since this is a Lie group, right? There's this Lie group, three-dimensional Lie group right. of rotations in three-dimensional right. space. Right. And since it's a Lie group, these different circles twist around one another, which means they interact. And this is why elementary particles interact, is because these different uh, Lie group actions are related. Okay. And you can see this in the rotation of this object. For example. I'm taking this object, if I rotate it 180 degrees in this plane, and then 180 degrees in that one, that's equal to 180 degree rotation right. in this third plane. Right. Right. Right? right. Now this is exactly the way elementary particles interact as described by a Lie group. You have two that combine to give a third. This okay. is just like a, um, say a, an electron uh, interacting with a W particle to give a neutrino. Okay? The, these two particles come in, combine, and a third leaves that's different. Okay. But they all have to add up, just, right. just like these rotations uh, combine okay. in this Lie group rotation. Okay, so now normal objects, normal objects uh, have what's called a spin of one, right? And what that means is you take it and you rotate it around 360 degrees, and it returns to its original state. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you were to plot out what its spin charge is, you you know, let's give it an object with plus or minus one spin charge. But the things like electrons and quarks and neutrinos, they don't have a spin charge of one. They have a spin charge of one half. Mm. Okay? Which means they don't return to the original state when you twist them 360 degrees. You have to twist them 720 degrees. So I can sort of give you an idea of how that works. So if you take some object and say I want to return it to its original state, but to leave it in my open palm, just twisting my arm. So if I start rotating this thing in this plane, if I rotate it around 360 degrees, uh, uh, yeah. I have a twist on my arm. Yeah. But if I keep going, uh, another okay. all the way to 720, that was very good. <laughs> there's no twist. You've done that before. <laughs> yeah. So this uh, electrons work like this, where you have to rotate them 720 degrees to return them to that original state. So they, they have this spin charge of one half. So electrons interact differently with the spin three Lie group than uh, than normal objects. And this is, so this is how the gravitational charge works. So the spin of electrons is actually corresponds to the gravitational charge. So let's get to time. Okay, so for time, uh, we know that as objects move, so uh, let me get a clock on here. Uh, oh, okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so if you have some ticking clock, mm -hmm. right? Now, from special relativity, we know as this object moves, right, it rotates in space-time. And the space-time Lie group is called spin 3-1. That's three rotations in space in one time dimension. Okay, so it's a larger Lie group. But it's just uh, another set of rotations. So as this thing moves, you see it get shorter along its direction of, of motion, just as if it was being rotated, mm. right? But you don't see it get longer in sp some space direction. Instead, you see it get longer in time. Mm -hmm. You see this clock tick more slowly as mm. it's moving. That's mm. called time dilation. Right. All right. well, that's relativity. Yeah, and this is this is how special relativity works. Right. So what this theory does is it tells you what frame at every point in our space time is at rest. Wow. wow. Okay. So this is this is what the gravitational frame is. So once you know how this Lie group is twisting, so once you know how this Lie group is twisting over our, every point in space time. Right? That tells you because of that twisting what the flow of time is at every point which tells you which frame in your space-time is at rest. Well, that, that would be a remarkable result. Yeah. <clears throat> How confident are you of that? I'm very confident in that result. Yeah. I'm extremely confident in that result. And the there, there are things about this theory that I'm you know, much less confident in, but that one is rock solid. Yeah, in fact, it gives a, I was so happy to see that because it's the precise description of gravity that it gives is called de Sitter space. And de Sitter space-time uh, does correspond experimentally 
to the current universe that we see around us. So that was, uh, I was very happy to see that. Yeah, so we come up with a, a space time that has a cosmological constant that uh, corresponds to uh, the space time that we see. And so this cosmological constant corresponds to the dark energy in our universe. And uh, this also, because of this unification, corresponds to the background value of the Higgs field throughout space time. And it's, it's, uh, it, it works together fantastically in this theory. I was very happy to see it come out that way.